Hey everyone, my name is Hus, that's G-U-U-S, and today I'm giving you my review as a middle distance athlete of the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 20. The Brooks GTS range of shoes is a very loved and very recognized range of stability shoes released by Brooks. Now, how did I as a middle distance athlete acquire this shoe? Um, it's actually an interesting story because when I got this shoe, I didn't know too much about the technologies and such in shoes uh, yet. So I just went to my local shoe store, I asked for a normal everyday trainer and after fitting a couple of shoes on, this is the shoe uh, which I thought felt the nicest. Now as I said, I had no clue this was actually a stability shoe. <clears throat> so after about 300 kilometers now, I figured I would give my opinion as a track or middle distance athlete on the Brooks stability shoe. In case you don't have a lot of time or you just have a short attention span, I will actually start this review with my final verdict on the shoe and kind of my perspective uh, as a track athlete or middle distance athlete, I should say. Now, it is important to keep in mind that exact thing. I am a middle distance athlete, which means that uh, in competition, I mainly focus on the 800 meters. Um, during my trainings, this means that I do not use this shoe when doing normal like kind of everyday trainings which are often shorter distances uh, in faster paces and a number of repetitions of those shorter distances so in that case i tend to use either of these two shoes of course when i am on the track i will technically or most of the time use spikes so this is the new balance md 800 with perfect grip on the track of course because of those spikes and um, sometimes on the track, but primarily on the road, I will use the on uh, Cloud X this is. So it's a more lightweight shoe, uh, a little less foam underneath and a bit harder foam to get some more responsivity and um, to just run faster overall. But then you might be wondering, what do you use this shoe for? And that is those trainings in between the faster track or road trainings. So it's either a recovery run or a bit of a faster but longer consistent run. So between eight and 16 kilometers. That's where I've been using this shoe for, for the past, let's say four months, more or less. So uh, I think I have a good opinion on this shoe by now and I'm here to share it with you. So let me start by saying that I think this is a great shoe for a lot of people because of the in increased stability using the guide rail system, even a neutral runner can run on this shoe and especially if you enjoy that kind of stability feel in your heel, it's gonna feel really nice and really secure. Together with the big drop from the heel to the toe, which is 12 millimeters in the shoe, which is quite big, um, you're gonna get a really um, dynamic ride. You're gonna feel like the shoe is kind of pushing you forward, forcing you to run faster maybe. So especially if you are somebody who runs longer distances, enjoys the stability in the heel, uh, and doesn't go super fast on the roads, I think this can be a really good shoe for you. Now, personally, as a track athlete, I am kind of confused about this shoe. It's in this weird gray area where it gives me a lot of stability, but also forces me to go fast. And this gives kind of an awkward experience uh, to me, especially on my faster, more volume building uh, runs, as I like to call them. So because of the stability in the heel, and the high drop, which is actually the two things that you might like about this shoe, um, I personally am not the biggest fan. Now, even though I don't enjoy this shoe in a lot of situations, I will keep using this shoe. So if you would like to know uh, in which situation I will keep using this shoe, as well as my final score uh, for this shoe, uh, please stick around till the end of the video. But now that you know my opinion about the shoe, Let's have a look at the shoe in some more detail. I'm gonna start from the bottom and build all the way to the top. So let's get started with the outsole of this shoe. Um, as you can see, there's quite a lot of rubber, two different types of rubber on this outsole. Uh, rubber is always good, of course, on an outsole. The foam that they use in the midsole of the shoe is usually not very durable. So by including rubber on the outsole of the shoe, it actually makes the shoe more durable. Now, in this case, Brooks decided to go for two different types of rubber. So we have the more standard gray rubber, which is also, yeah, well, it feels like a car tire. It's more squishy um, and it feels uh, quite nice. 
and then on the heel and i'm assuming this is because they wanted to give more stability to this heel since it's a big selling point of course of this shoe they use a harder rubber which is actually i mean i would call it non-squishy uh, not squishy at all and i do think this is an odd choice because usually the places you will see wear on a running shoe is in the front or in the toe area and back here on the heel as you can see the toe area is still looking pretty good for me but the heel and i am going to blame this on this denser rubber is wearing quite a lot for me and of course it's nice to have that extra stability there but if the stability is going to wear off quicker why would you include are you serious All right, where was I? So yeah, the increased stability rubber that they used right here in the heel also wears quicker, which I think is an odd choice because there is increased stability, but then if it's gonna wear quicker, you're gonna lose that stability again. So I would have preferred to see Brooks actually use this uh, less dense foam all over the shoe to increase the durability, maybe decrease the stability a little bit, but I think there's enough other elements in this shoe uh, which ensure stability. So. Mm, it's kind of a, a minus point for me on this heel and then moving up from the heel we have the midsole and here it's gonna go again <sighs> brooks has used two different types of foam for this midsole we have the dna loft foam which is brooks's softest foam which is a mixture of eva air and rubber so it's very soft um, and also a uh, very lightweight Together with, uh, on top of this, and this is something you can't actually see, they use a layer of Bio Mogo foam, which is Brooks's more responsive and also biodegradable foam. So that's always a good thing. So together, the DNA Loft foam uh, and the Bio Mogo foam are there to give a cushion, but also a responsive ride um, when you are running. And I can definitely attest to this. This shoe will make you feel like you're going faster and will actually force you to go faster. And then we have the biggest stability element in this shoe, which is the guide rail right here. And it goes all the way around the kind of heel portion of the foot to cup your heel into this shoe, give it some more stability. You will often see shoe manufacturers not going for this guide rail system, but putting a little block of uh, more dense foam or either plastic in the midsole of the shoe. Now, I actually like this guide rail system because even neutral runners will uh, be able to wear this shoe without really struggling too much you are going to feel some increased stability on this heel portion but you can run in the shoe and you're, it's not going to mess up your foot so to say so if you are a neutral runner and you like increased stability i think this is a really good choice if you are somebody who does over pronate so who does kind of like go inwards uh, with their foot this guide trail is going to catch your heel and it's going to push it back straight and I think it's also the case for the other side since there's also uh, a rail right there. So it's gonna push it straight. So this portion of the shoe will kind of cup your heel and push it back when it wants to go somewhere where it shouldn't go. And if we're talking about stability, we should also move up to the heel counter, which is a really sturdy, as you can see, uh, heel counter. There's some nice plush on the inside and it really grabs your heel. I haven't had any problems with my heel slipping out of this shoe and also no chafing because of that nice and uh, plush heel counter. And then finally, the last element I'm gonna discuss is the upper. I'm gonna include the tongue and the shoelaces here. So this is an engineered mesh upper. It's not super thick, but it's also not super thin like you see on some of the racing shoes uh, like I showed you before. It's nice and breathable and together with this really nice and cushioned tongue, uh, and also the shoelaces are kind of thick and nice. I haven't had any problems. It's nice and breathable. It's nice and soft. Um, the, because of the thickness, I was scared that uh, the tongue might kind of fold and give some problems, but I didn't experience any at all. So how does this shoe fit overall? That's a really good question. I do think it fits true to size. I've been struggling with shoe sizes a little bit. So I think I got it half a size too big with a more narrow width. So this is a 42 uh, European size with a B width. I would personally actually go down half a size to a 42 with a normal uh, width because 
right now I do have a little too much space over here in the toe box which I don't enjoy uh, a whole lot and it causes some scrunching right here uh, at the top of the shoe. How does it feel? Uh, especially with the upper, I think it, it, it feels really nice. It's kind of this sock-like feeling. Um, if you like stability, especially uh, for me on a, a bit of the slower tempos, I really like the stability in the heel here. And as I already said, the shoe, uh, because of the big drop, it's gonna make you feel like you are going faster or it's gonna force you to go faster. It's not just a feeling, it's actually the physical ability to go faster. So then we've reached the point where I will give my final score of this shoe. And for me, this is a three out of five. Um, let's do three out of five suns because it's nice and warm uh, or springy outside. We want some more sun. So three out of five suns for this shoe. That is for me personally. I'm sure that for you, uh, especially if you are not as much of a middle distance athlete, this can be a four out of five or a five, of five out of five star shoe for you because of the reasons I've already uh, talked about before. But for me, it's a three out of five stars. Now, how will I be using this shoe from this point on? For me, this will become more of a recovery day shoe because that's where I find myself enjoying it the most on those a bit slower paces when I consciously tell myself, okay, you're not gonna go that fast today. Then I quite enjoy the stability um, and uh, the high drop, I mean, it's not ideal for a recovery day shoe, of course, but I don't mind this as much either. So this will be um, my recovery day shoe moving on as soon as I get a new everyday trainer. But that's all the information I have for you today. Do you have any questions or feedback or maybe you own this shoe or a previous iteration of this shoe? Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. If you thought this video was helpful, um, or you just want to make Accuse happy, please consider liking this video. You can also stick around for more content like this uh, about running and technology and ideally the combination of the two by subscribing to my YouTube channel. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and you will see me in the next video. Bye bye.